Hello guys, um, this is going to be part one of my um, little series of videos I'm going to make on how to um, build a HTPC or a PC. Um, so first I'm going to split it into a bunch of videos so that it doesn't become too long and boring. So I thought the first video should be the parts, your components that you choose and why you should choose them. So here in front of me I've got everything I need to get started to build my HTPC slash PC. So I'm going to go through them bit by bit in terms of what I think is most important. Um, let, let me start off first of all with the case. Now the case in my opinion is the most important part um, because it's something that's going to potentially outlast all your other components and especially if you're a beginner to building PCs it's going to mean the difference between a really simple fun build or a god awful difficult you know hell build now what I mean by that I mean this is going to be my fifth custom PC build I've built in four other cases your, your case your case choice determines how easy your build's going to be so for example if I show you the background there you can see here that's my main gaming PC that green thing that's a full tower case um, and that is really really simple to build into it's huge it's got lots of room it's got lots of options for cable tidying so when you're plugging in all your bits and pieces it's very straightforward and then on that in that corner over there you can see there's like a small smaller case that's a mid tower case um, and again those are pretty simple for building in and if it's your first build those are probably better now the reason why I'm, this is called a HTPC build is because I'm building it into a case which will not look out of place in your AV rack or under your television so these cases tend to be more compact and designed you know with that kind of aesthetic in mind so they tend to have good storage options and obviously the cooling is designed to you know give maximum performance considering the space now that unfortunately means the builds tend to be a bit more cramped a bit more difficult than if you were to use the um, full tower or mid tower case that I've shown you so you know first things first make sure you purchase a case which is going to last you um, be able to handle the kind of components you're putting in them um, so for example if you were to buy a cheap small case it might fit cheaper smaller components however in the future if you decide to upgrade you're probably going to end up upgrading your case to be able to fit you know bigger like hotter components so that's the first thing um, that's important is you know choosing the right case so here we've got the Silverstone GD08 which I've done an unboxing of in another video and that is going to be the basis of my home theatre PC second most important component is your power supply now this is the power supply I'll be using this is from an older build I didn't need to buy another one it's a 700 watt modular power supply by OCZ again this is a very important purchase um, whether you're building you know any custom PC so your case and then your power supply these are in my opinion the most important bits because these are the bits that are potentially going to last you the longest now currently 700 watts might seem that it's overkill um, and also the wattage isn't the most important thing the most important things are actually the efficiency and how many amps um, a power supply can handle on its 12 volt rail because that's where you're going to be kind of feeding it the graphics card etc so this this um, power supply is actually certified 80 plus I can't remember whether it's um, a bronze or silver but I think it's a silver um, it's 700 watts and it has on the 12 volt rail uh, how many amps has it got on the 12 volt rail 50 amps on the 12 volt rail which is you know pretty decent so you know the majority of its power is on there which means I'll be able to later on put in a powerful graphics card um, if I needed to and that will that will be great for that so there's your power supply you can see this is a semi modular one the the motherboard connector and the CPU connector are hardwired but the other bits um, so for example the power for the graphics card the power for the hard drives etc that I that's all modular so I only need to have as many cables as needed next bit I'm going to show you is the motherboard now the motherboard I've chosen is a very budget board this is the MSI B75MA-E33 motherboard 
Um, the reason why I chose this is because of the build that it's going in. Um, now this is going into a HTPC build, a home theatre PC build, which doesn't need overclocking. I'm going to be running a low power processor, um, so it's not going to have any need for, you know, to be overclocked. However, this does have some really handy features, such as it's got a HDMI out on board, so it will take advantage of my processor's onboard graphics. Um, and you know that for me was pretty much the only major thing that I was I was, I was looking at. Um, other than that, it's a very basic motherboard. It's going to be very ugly. I think it's like a, got like a brown PCB on it, um, so it's not designed to look nice. I'm not going to be looking to run SLI graphics cards or Crossfire graphics cards. So I'm not going to be looking to run you know two graphics cards basically or or more I'm happy with just the one graphics card and, and again this will allow me to do that so the more money you spend on your graphics card the main things you're going to be able to get are the ability to overclock your processor so if you buy certain processors you can unlock them and um, or they come unlocked and you can boost them up so you might buy a processor which runs at a certain speed like 3 gigahertz for example and you'll be able to push it to 4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz by adding more voltage and um, and doing various other things which are offered in the motherboard options so you know again your motherboard depends on what you're going to use it for my motherboard doesn't need overclocking doesn't need multiple graphic card support so this graphics card uh, sorry this motherboard is more than adequate so that's my motherboard so you need that now onto your motherboard you're going to install, or into your motherboard, you're going to install the processor. Again, I have chosen a, a suitable processor for what I'm going to use it for. This is the um, Ivy Bridge i3-3220 processor. Um, this has onboard graphics which are okay for watching, um, for powering watching, for example, TV or Blu-rays or DVDs. Um, and it's going to be plenty quick. It's um, a 3. Point, uh, how many gig is it? I don't know. Let's have a look. It's a 3.3 gigahertz processor with three megabytes of cache. It only runs at 55 watt, you know, power, so it, it, very low power, um, and so that will be perfect. It has got hyper threading, which is great, um, but you know, the main features for me are that it's fast at 3.3 gigahertz. It's you know using the new Ivy Bridge stuff, um, and it has it supports two channel DDR, your dual channel DDR3 memory, and it's got built-in Intel graphics HD. 2500 graphics which will be fine for everyday usage and uh, a later point I will be adding a graphics card but for now this processor will give me graphics with this motherboard you know I'll just use the HDMI out and that will allow me to watch DVDs and Blu-rays for now and then when I fancy or when I can afford it more to more to the point I'll plop in a graphics card so next thing you need is memory so again this is stuff that I had left from before this is some this is 8 gigs of DDR3 memory from Corsair, so I'll be using that. A hard drive, again taken from bits that I've got left lying around. This is a standard um, 7200 RPM, 250 gigabyte hard drive, more than adequate because I actually keep most of my storage, my data and stuff in that thing in that corner there. That's my makeshift Windows Home Server, so that keeps all my videos and photos, so I don't need a massive amount of storage, and at some point I'll probably be changing that out for an SSD drive. Um, and then in this bubble wrapping, I have got a Blu-ray drive. So those are the components I've chosen, and those will form a perfectly decent home theatre PC. So if if there's anything that you guys need to ask questions about, you know, please um, put ask ask any questions you have in the comments, um, and you know, make sure when you decide to build a PC, you buy parts which are relevant to what you are going to be using it for. Um, for example, the parts I've used in that computer there are very different to the parts I'm going to be using in my home theater PC there. Um, that computer at the back there, that the green one, is my gaming PC, so it has. Um, a powerful motherboard processor, um, you know everything is is geared towards you know overclocking and performance for gaming. This thing here is going to be running with coolness and quietness in mind, and you know it's not necessary for me to have those features. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, please like the video if you liked it and comment, ask any questions you have. So this is part one, showing you the components I'm going to be using in my home theatre PC build. Part two is going to be me hopefully showing you how to install the
processor into the motherboard, etc., and you know, getting your case ready for for installing it all, and we'll go from there. So thanks for watching, guys.